Um, I'm Claire. This is a piece of work done by myself and a colleague, Debbie Reynolds, who can't be here. She's the course leader. Um, what we're going to do is take you through the journey um, of implemented a blended learning model using Moodle as the BLE in our institution um, with a large cohort of students, um, about 500 students and about 11 members of staff. So it's quite a large team, quite a large project. Um, I'm just going to look through the drivers behind it, the journey, what we found out and see if that can be of any use to yourselves and then hopefully have time for discussion to share other people's experiences um, and thoughts of moving on from here. Um, so kind of looking at is Moodle the answer, is it the panacea or is it a challenge? <coughs> so why look to change things at all? Um, going back to talking this morning about the changes in technology and drivers. A mixture of trying to meet issues and challenges and looking at opportunities of how we can move forward and make things better. So in this particular unit, there were some challenges such as a lack of student engagement being such a large unit. It was a key skills unit, which is not always the most popular with students. Um, and lack of continuity, etc. different staff doing things in slightly different ways. The lectures and seminars were seen not to be linking terribly well with each other. Um, again, perhaps uh, through staff and administrative processes. So students were beginning to fail on this unit, um, whether it was the students failing or the academics and the course failing the students. There's debate there. Um, and also there was the opportunity of institutional drive towards embracing technology. At Solent, um, we were having quite a large expansion in the learning technology team, which is what I'm part of. And there was very much a focus on looking to using technology as a solution, which for some people was an exciting opportunity and for others more of a challenge. So the course team looked at this as an opportunity um, to look at the tools involved in Moodle and see how this could help solve some of the challenges on the unit and how to make opportunities to do something new within the institution um, and be seen to be driving things forward. So some of the opportunities seen were opportunities to enhance student engagement because Moodle has a lot of tools that both help engage students and also help to monitor progress. So at a much earlier stage, it can be seen how the students are or are not engaging, how they're doing, and give an opportunity to respond quickly where the students might need more support than was originally realised. So things like quizzes that give you feedback both to the student and to the staff, the reporting tools where you can follow engagement, um, see who's accessing the unit, who's doing online activities, who isn't, and that sort of thing. So these making use of these functions and also the dynamic tools to try and get the learning slightly more engaging than it was originally. So, and there was also the opportunity to look at the perceptions of students as being tech savvy and expecting this stuff when they enter HG. Um, there's a lot of debate on that, which again was mentioned earlier about the net generation, the fact that they're using all these tools, they're expecting it, they want this dynamic learning environment. And so we were looking at making use of that. Um, and obviously also a chance to develop something new to try and learn from it to inform best practice, both within the institution and further. So as a course team, looked at Moodle, great, we've got this new tool, where do we start? It's an amazing toolbox of opportunities of things you can use and things you can do with students. Um, with the open source aspect and all the plugins as well, it's even wider than that. Um, but this is one of the things that the course team find quite overwhelming as well, is that you have got all these tools, where do you start? It's a challenge to use the right things, use them appropriately. Um, which is where we're very fortunate at Solent that we've got a strong learning technology team who can support academics in that, um, which is definitely something that we found beneficial. So, <coughs> sitting down, talking through with the course team, looking at the tools available, a selection was made of what, where to start, which tools to introduce, and it's certainly been looked at as a long-term and gradual process to introduce these different things and find out what's appropriate for the job. So trying not to get overwhelmed by it all and also trying not to just select everything and throw everything at the problem and just overwhelm the students with all these different new things. So this graph is um, just a conceptual um, illustration 
of perhaps where a lot of academics and lecturers feel the gap between themselves and what they perceive as learning technologists or specialists is. So they see the learning technologists as starting with a quite a high technological level, constantly moving up, constantly progressing as new technology is available, as systems get upgraded, all the rest of it, and feel that perhaps them as lecturers are lagging behind that and bumbling along is the phrase that we often hear. So there is this slight conceptual gap, um, whether or not it's accurate is another matter, but feeling that perhaps technologists are moving, um, academics are moving along at a slower rate um, in fits and starts as they try new tools as classes, things succeed, things don't succeed, their confidence gets built up, they get the support they need or not. Um, but there's also other con uh, factors towards that, such as the responsibility that you're not experimenting with your students, so everything has to be done in a very structured way. Um, changes need to be incremental, the students need to be supported in that. You can't suddenly change everything. Um, perhaps from an ethical point of view. And also the usual issues of um, staff training, time constraints, opportunities to develop stuff. So that conceptual gap is perhaps something that needs to be addressed. So this is um, an outline of our particular journey and what we did in this particular example with this unit. Um, so in the left-hand column is perhaps quite a familiar starting point for a lot of people moving to online environments. Um, we used the basic Moodle setup. It was mainly seen as a resource dump, so there were a few bits of um, Word documents, of course, information, maybe the odd set of PowerPoint slides. Usual format of a standard lecture followed by a seminar and assignments all submitted on paper. And then through a gradual implementation, we've moved on from that. So the first stage was um, what was considered quite radical within um, the course team was to replace the standard lecture with, virt with the online learning thing, um, tasks followed by using this time as a workshop. So instead of a remote lecturer standing at the front talking, the time was reworked into much more smaller group workshop sessions and the information resource part was placed online. Um, started off with doing some narrated PowerPoints, some resource direction, much more coordinated resource centre rather than an accidental bump, um, and quiz using the quizzes tool to engage students a bit more. Developing on from that was moving into a much more integrated resource centre where things were all interlinked and all interrelevant. Um, this year we had full adoption of narrated PowerPoints, so all the what would have been lectures was changed to online narrated PowerPoints with integrated quizzes using iSpring. Um, it was all linked up much better with having the online part. Then you had your workshop with your tutor. Then you went back online to do formative quizzes or assessments. And also we moved to online submission of uh, written assessments via Turnitin, which is an institution-wide thing, not just for this unit. Um, and then we're also looking at moving on from this to then integrate more tools, um, looking at perhaps using wikis for project group work and using more of the tracking tools to try and follow engagement within groups. So that's kind of our gradual progress of using tools step by step to try and build up a much more blended environment. Um, so here are some of the key things that we feel we've learned from the journey. Um, which is, as the title says, that in some ways it's a panacea and in some ways it's problematic. Um, so again, you've got the differing views of technology, so you might see it as an answer to a lot of the problems, but not so much for others. Um, one of the key things we've learned was the collaboration aspect between the course development team, course design team, and the learning technology team, um, and how the different areas of expertise can really be pulled together to make the best use um, of the environment, of the tools, and that that conversation is invaluable. Um, lecturer perspectives was quite an interesting challenge. As I said, it was quite a large course team um, of 11 lecturers, so the course designers and course leaders were very excited about this opportunity, very excited about developing blended learning, very excited about being able to make more use of the VLE maybe not all of the course team shared that level of excitement. 
So we had a few comments coming up in planning and in discussion about the units that may sound familiar to some of you. Um, so there is that level of resistance which does have to be met and does have to be worked with. Um, again, with different people in different institutions, there's no magic answer to this, but it's very much a case of supporting the lecturers in the change, giving opportunity to, for staff development, for addressing any fears of the technology, um, perhaps making sure they understand the rationale behind the blended learning, the reason for the changes, and not just see it as change for change's sake, etc. Um, and it is difficult to challenge the established practices, as Gronje was saying this morning, the change in pedagogy, um, which makes the most of these opportunities, um, does require quite a lot of support um, among some staff. So. There was also the student aspect to it. The assumption that all the learners were coming in as tech savvy, ready to use this stuff. Again, um, not just here, but more widely, is being challenged. Um, we found out that they had quite a variety of previous experience, quite a variety of expectations in what they wanted from their learning when they came into higher education. We were running surveys, um, both this year and last year. It was a very neat. 50-50 split between those that had met but online learning before coming to the uni and those that hadn't in the form of a VLE. And they may have 97% been using Facebook, but that didn't mean that they had the digital literacy to use um, the online learning environment themselves without scaffolding and without support. It's a very different way of looking at the technology. So what did the students tell us? Um, the stats from the site did show that they have been engaging. There were a lot of hits. Um, they are all going online. They are making use of the resources. They are participating in the quizzes, which is very encouraging. So they are finding that as a useful way to engage, which was up on the traditional method where they, a lot were not engaging at all. The feedback, we ran surveys on both um, this year and last year's units, was generally positive, but quite a varied experience, possibly resulting from the varied implementation from the different tutors and uh, their varied perspectives, which tends to translate through to the students. But overall, it was quite positive. Um, and the key things that they found particularly useful were the flexibility of the online learning. They liked being able to do it when suited them and suited their learning methods. Um, and they felt, said that it helped them feel engaged with the course. They particularly liked the online PowerPoints and the quizzes. Um, so they liked the formative feedback from the quizzes. They liked to know that they were getting the hang of things and were in the right place. One thing, interesting thing that came out of it was they felt they had really good contact with tutors. Um, so again, you can conjecture quite why that may have been with the smaller group seminars rather than the lectures. They felt more involved and closer to their tutors, which is something um, that's quite valued in the student experience generally. So some of the quotes, um, we had a lot of information come out. These are just a couple that uh, summarise what the feeling was, um, if you can read them. So just generally saying that they found it flexible, um, they enjoyed the format, the discussions, rather than just being talked at by a lecturer, but that there were definitely areas of improvement, particularly something we're looking at is um, linking more clearly the blended online stuff with the seminars, um, so what we call building on the blend, and encouraging the workshop seminar tutors to really link the online stuff into their own seminar work and back into online to make it much more of a cohesive whole rather than two standalone things, which is what is sometimes happening at the moment. Um, so that's a bit of a summary of where we've got to at the moment um, as part of the incremental process. So this is kind of what we're looking at as perhaps opportunities to take this forward. Um, some of the key things is developing and supporting the academics um, on their journey in implementing this blended learning style. So challenging perhaps their established viewpoints of how they run the lecture format. Um, what they're expecting, how you're going to use your time. Using an online learning environment can very much front load your time sometimes in setting things up. Um, so it's supporting them on that, both from the learning technology team and also from the course design team and management in a releasing time for training um, and supporting the change in the development in pedagogy. 
So developing competency, both in using technical stuff, um, but also competency in understanding the rationales, um, the pedagogy, and the design process for moving to an online blended um, design, which is different from what they may have been doing before. As we said, particularly building on the blend and making it more of a cohesive whole from the start of the um, online environment through the seminars and back through so the students feel that it's all one scenario rather than disparate learning elements. Um, excuse me. <coughs> so also to the students um, to be able to scaffold their learning. So as we was mentioned with digital literacies, to not be expecting them to come in completely familiar with these technologies, completely familiar with online learning, but to be able to scaffold them in how they approach it, what's expected of them, how much time they're expected to put into it, um, how the teacher's going to support them in that, and exactly what that environment means. <coughs> so as we said before, build on the relationship between the course development, the tutors and the learning technologists, getting everyone involved in the conversation um, and making feel they have ownership and partnership within that so that you can build a more successful, cohesive unit. Um, looking at incremental change, so as you mentioned earlier, from a learning technology point of view, it might be, yay, these technologies are shooting ahead, we can do all this different stuff, isn't it great, we want to play with these tools, um, which, but that doesn't necessarily translate appropriately into the academic context and perhaps the appropriate way of implementing the tools might be a bit more incremental than sometimes we'd like. Um, and also looking at developing more of the use of Moodle functionality and that incredible toolbox that is out there um, and selecting more of the tools each time and putting them into the kit that you've got um, without overwhelming everybody. So that's just a view through um, our journey of one particular example of using Moodle to implement a blended learning model. What I wanted to do was to leave plenty of time for people to discuss their own experiences, um, to share any common issues or challenges, um, and share, just share knowledge, really. Yeah, it was a key skills unit. Sorry, the question was, what unit was it that it was um, being taught on? Um, it was a first year key skills unit um, for undergraduate students at the university. I can't comment so much on that because I'm not one of the course tutors on this unit. Um, but the content was very much developed from the key skills curriculum that the unit was a part of. Um, and it was taking the content and developing it in a more interactive way. So the lecturers, um, there were narrated PowerPoints, there were quizzes, there was resource information. And then that was built upon in the workshops with the individual tutors. So they used their own skills and knowledge um, within the course context because it was a um, sport and tourism course as a whole that then split up into individual seminar groups depending on their degree programme so they contextualised the key skills then into their own unit information. The main on that be a challenge, sorry, can you say? <laughs> okay, so what support was there for lecturers in developing the online content? Um, for this unit, most of the online content, so the pre, um, the VLE stuff before the seminar sessions was developed by a couple of the course leaders rather than the tutors as a whole, um, and they work closely with the learning technologists and with developing their own understanding as a project to put that content together and then the rest of the course team were involved in the seminar aspect of it and developing on it in that way. Does that answer? Okay. First of all, I'd like to comment on the course content. If your experience of doing actually a range of industrial courses, people, things like cabinet, college, or automotive engineering, but if lecturers are going to have something that people can access later, they may not be sure that it's good because it exists. Then uh, they, they don't like it. They like to have something. 
I ju if those who didn't hear it, I was saying that it's a content which is going to go <coughs> onto the web. People make jolly sure it's good content, and the <coughs> and the content combination between audio and slides or video, etc. They do it wrong, but it also means that people. It's a lot of work to do, so the lecturers in the first place aren't keen to do it. But of course, they're very keen once they've done it, because they've got half far less work to do for the next two or three years before they start revision. Uh, the question I've got was, uh, with your successful short period, the 11, <coughs> you know, with, you, I think it was 500 students and 11 mm. lecturers, are you going to roll it out more widely across some universities? Um, I can't answer for policy decisions on that, but there is, it's definitely being shared as good practice um, with internal conferences and shared amongst tutors themselves and trying to, um, what we're constantly doing is trying to encourage good practice and that, but I, I'm not in a position to fully answer that question, I'm afraid. Hello. Um, as far as subject expertise and learning expertise goes, um, certainly lecturers will be or should be subject experts. Do you think there's mileage in offering support from a team who go around to all faculties and, and help people convert their courses rather than encourage lecturers to be, if you like, technology experts as well as subject experts? So want people to, to convert the course mm. with them. My, I can only answer that from kind of a personal perspective. I think there's an opportunity for both um, because I think it is very much subject knowledge and subject expert is the expertise that needs to be translated and put on to blended less formats, which is where we kind of said the importance of the discussion between the course team and the learning technologists, who I suppose you could say are the technology experts, and it's a bl with the two working together with their own areas of expertise that's most likely to come up with the most successful models, because you're bringing both the technological understanding of how the tools work, the best pedagogy for the tools and the best opportunities of using them, and also the course team aspect of what knowledge they've got their expertise and what they are looking for the students to learn through the process. So I think a dialogue between the two is probably the most effective method. Got anything to add to that? Yeah, it just kind of slightly follows on from the last point actually. Um, in terms of what you've found so far with your tutors now that have kind of had some support and training, how far do you think they are along the line of obviously now they've probably they've got more skills of using BLE kind of during the courses and day to day teaching. How far along the line do you think they are from getting to the point where they become maybe slightly more self sufficient? So like in our case we're quite a small organisation and actually Moodle on kind of a network administrator by trade. I've kind of just gone into Moodle because I think we have to do it and if I didn't do it none of us would. So just be interested to see going on if I ever think there might be a day when tutors start feeling to upskilled enough, they can start doing it on their own, or if I will, we need to support them to the end of time, pretty much. Good question. Does anyone have an answer to that? Yeah. Does anyone have an answer to that? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Rosa Douglas, e-learning manager at Big Head College, and I would say, due to that, you, you will have them becoming self-sufficient and you will have your enthusiasm. The day will come when you'll find out new things are happening without you knowing about it, but you will never stop supporting the new things coming in and new people. So you'll never be without a job, I think is what I'm <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. Actually, that, that's, that's our experience as well. Uh, Paul and I work in um, teacher training, as I said, um, but that's what we find is we have courses set up and they're, they're fairly static in that a mentor facilitator person comes along and runs the course um, and these are run by the international baccalaureate standards but what we find is that the, the more often they do that the more familiar they get with the tools and they start to play with them and you know we can't stop people playing with stuff but then again there's, there's ongoing support for those and, and ever new ones coming along yeah okay thanks yes Catherine, I'm from uh, Erasmus University's, uh, the Institute of Social Studies in The Hague. And uh, with regard to uh, the 
the contents of the course and, and the teaching prowess and with regard to the skills and pedagogical uh, tools that are used in Moodle or otherwise. We, we do that uh, quite nicely now through Moodle using one of the activities for fee the feedback activity for the course evaluation where the, 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 stu the learners indicate. But what has happened is uh, including the teaching uh, groups uh, for each course, uh, they <coughs> can now add questions they would like to add uh, with the understanding that the results are posted in Moodle for future students to look at. So, you know, the, 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 the learning objectives clearly stated at the beginning of a course, at the end the learners will be asked uh, the learning outcomes, whether they match the objectives. So, you know, th that's all part of the evaluation, which I think uh, prior to the technology explosion <coughs> with regard to VLEs, uh, that wasn't always the case, that learners were given the opportunity to, um, to freely express on a public domain uh, what a course held for them. With regard to questions about w the, the management of the institution, they've also put in um, things like, um, uh, were the tools used in Moodle valuable for you? Can you suggest changes? You know, that type of thing. Paul Thornton, University of Exeter. Um, feeding back on how do you keep the quality of uh, the people creating the courses and keeping that under control? Perhaps coming from a rather larger institution, and we used to use WebCT before coming onto Moodle, what we utilised was champions um, who either had, had extensive training in all the use of the tools or had actually shown a flair to you best use the tools. So, um, because, once again, because we've got a larger group of tutors that are using it, those champions became a local reference for peer training, peer support, actually kept things in, in control a little bit. They controlled the reins. So if someone started using a particular tool in a way that perhaps was on a hiding to nothing or was going to have potential problems in the future, they would gently encourage them rather than whipping them and saying, don't do that because they were in the same group of peer group. So it was, they, they reflected and um, accepted it better than perhaps uh, in our situation we have educational technologists who are the people that do the training. Um, some of our lecturing staff would see them as outsiders to what they were doing and there was a little bit, can I say, an ivory tower syndrome going on there that I know what I'm doing, you can't tell me how to do it better. So the peer relationship actually made things much, much better. Whether that scales down, I appreciate there's, there's some people here like yourself who've only got a few people perhaps involved in that. I don't know, but it's, it's a useful technique. Thank you. Actually, that does fit in quite well actually to our experience so far, because we've had less people on there, so I'm just obviously ramping it up. We've had one or two that have done some really stunning courses on there. And um, we have like a start meeting every year around July time. I'm trying to just drag those people in, whether they're going to come or not, I think. Um, but it's just to inspire some people, because literally one of the courses, I think, all I've done was given a half hour demonstration to this tutor, and it's just photography tutor, so maybe the creativity was shining through there. But when I show that to people, I think our SMT saw it, and straight away they're like, that's your benefit to teaching and learning. That's a special thing on there. I think if other tutors see that a tutor can do that, kind of off their own back, then I think obviously it does give them a lot more hope. And for their courses, they think we're fun to do it, maybe I can do it too. So yeah, so that piece of work, I think can work pretty much all levels. Just find all those diamonds in the rough. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, diamonds in the rough. Yeah. Um, time for, okay, to keep to the time show, we just have one more question. Uh, 
I'm uh, Isabella Langefeld from Holland. I'm an independent uh, Moodle consultant. And I was wondering, you told us that uh, the students didn't really experience uh, the unit as a cohesive thing. That uh, what they did online in the PLE didn't really connect to what they did in the seminar. What is your strategy to improve this situation so that we that it really becomes a blended thing? Um, that was the experience of some of the students because it depended on which tutors they had and how they were implementing the blend. So some of them had a very cohesive experience, but some of them less so. Um, and I think the main way we're looking at addressing this is got two angles really. One is to have a kind of course booklet set up where things are much more clearly laid out and linked so there is the online stuff, there is a booklet that keeps it together and the other thing is, is staff training with the course team perhaps more effectively um, meeting with tutors beforehand and explaining the pedagogy behind the blend and what their expect, the expectation of the students and also to give ownership back to them so that they feel they have ownership of their classes but also within the bigger online environment plan so perhaps improving communication among the team as a whole and also looking at having some resources that pull it all together from, from the students perspective as well okay, okay well, well thanks very much Claire for sharing with us your uh, panacea or problematic um, as you put it and uh, let's show our appreciation for Claire Thank you.